Hi and welcome to our first video in our plywood mangrove tank build. This is going to be a 12 part series in which we cover every aspect of the build in an order as follows. Planning everything and building the frame. Building the tank shell. Painting, waterproofing and sealing the tank. Building the surround. Finishing the surround. Building the mangroves. Finishing the mangroves. Building the filtration system. Installing the acrylic front. Adding the water and plants. Adding the fish. Final thoughts and overview. In this video, we'll be covering the planning stage for the build, as well as going through the construction process for the frame that will end up holding the tank and the filtration system. The frame is going to be made out of two before, as we need a solid structure that will be able to hold near enough a thousand kilo when the project's finished. Now, the reason you need to plan in advance is you need to know how much two before you'll need for your build. Draw a simple box diagram of your frame and include some central vertical supports. Then take the outer measures as your first set of lengths. Next, double up on all of your vertical supports to make them square and give it even more strength. Finally, you want to add some horizontal slats to both the top and bottom of your frame to make sure that you can evenly distribute the load across the whole frame. Now, by taking all of these lengths, you can figure out how much 2 before you will need. It isn't as simple as just using the final length of all of your sides and saying job done, as 2 before comes in preset lengths depending on your supplier. Ours were sold in 2.4 meter lengths, so we worked out the minimum number of 2.4 beams needed to allow us to cut all of the pieces that we would need for the build. You could take away the overlap where some of the corners come together if you wanted, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so I'd recommend that you just use all the lengths the full distance and then cut away what you don't need. So to start off the actual build process, measure out and cut all of your pieces beforehand. This time choosing which are going to be your outer pieces and which are going to be on the inside. Then taking away the excess material caused by any overlap so that everything fits together and gives you your desired dimensions. I suggest you stack all of your pieces in different piles depending on the length of the cuts you've made to make them easier to find during the building process. Start out with the bottom of your frame. In our case, our frame is going to be 46 by 28 by 36 inches. So we're going to need two 42 inch lengths and two 28 inch lengths to make our rectangular base. We are taking 2 inches off either end of the 46 inch pieces as they would overlap with the 28 inch pieces in the corners. We used right angle clamps on all of our corners and drilled pilot holes for every single screw to make sure that we kept everything square during the assembly process and that it all went together smoothly. Make sure to use really good quality wood screws that go a good distance into both pieces of wood for a really secure hold and use at least 2 screws on all of your pieces. Once you have your basic rectangle done, it's time to add some vertical supports into each of the corners using 36 inch pieces. Make sure to have the 4 inch sides pointing in along the short side of the frame as shown in the video and screw into each of them so that they are connected to both the 42 inch and 28 inch pieces that make up the base. Repeat this for each of the 4 corners and then we're going to move on to creating the rim for the top of the frame. We're going to do this by building it right on top of the bottom frame pieces using the same measurements and process as before. When you've made the rectangular top frame, you can turn the whole thing upside down so that it will rest on the flat floor or whatever surface you're building it on. You might want to take the precaution of securing the loose frame in place so as you're flipping the rest of it over it doesn't fall free like ours did here. When the whole frame is upside down, you can then secure the four corner pieces to the top frame just like we did in the bottom. Next up is adding the central vertical support which will stop the frame from bowing in the centre due to the weight that will be put on top of it. Attach these in the same way that you did the corner verticals with two screws in the top and the bottom of each piece. Make sure that you centre the top and bottom of the beam before you do so. Now 
Now you have the basic structure of your frame done, we can move on to strengthening everything. This is a simple process of doubling up all the vertical pieces. and adding in some horizontal slats to the top and bottom of the stand as you see in the video. The vertical supports are 30 inches long as we're taking off 4 inches from each end and the horizontal slats are 24 inches long as they are having 2 inches taken off both ends. Once you've added all the necessary pieces, you can flip the whole thing over and get it sitting the right way up again as you're done with the base of the frame. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you tag along for the whole journey of the making of our plywood mangrove tank. Please make sure to like and subscribe in order to be notified when the rest of our videos for this build are released or if you just want to see some other cool projects like this one.